15,000, almost 16,000 over prior year. Um, rounds, actually slightly down, 7,001, 115 rounds down, but revenue per round is great. Um, kind of noticing a little bit of uh, uh, gaps, kind of in our middle day. Um, Dan, I think him and his guys kind of like it. You know, they can <laughs> be working some work done, but starting to see that. Are you seeing that, Keith? Yeah, oh yeah. Like the midday gap? I think it was so hot. I definitely, yeah. I definitely saw it in July. Yeah. I think a lot of it's the heat, but it was hot last year too. Um, I just think our golfers are getting a little more picky, but I don't see anything to get too concerned about yet. I mean, the rounds are still pretty amazing. Um, but just starting to see that little bit of a gap in the midday, so I don't know. Keep an eye on it. We're getting towards the end of the season here, but it's something we're going to try try to keep an eye on. I mean, it may be they get to the point where we might want to start maybe thinking that there's a dynamic pricing to be in the other direction during certain time periods, but uh, something to think about, nothing to jump the gun on yet. Looking at August, I think um, we're, well, we are about around 10,000 ahead of prior year's month to date. Um, but last year, this was going into a weekend. 27 to 28, so that may balance itself out. But either way, I think we're going to be real close to uh, last year's numbers for August as well. So, it's all good. Any questions? No questions? All right. Uh, we ended up in uh, July at about a little over 3,000 down. So 236 in 2023 and 232,992 in 2024. And Sam's right, there was definitely Twin Peaks. I don't know how closely you guys all follow the way golf courses fill up, but typically Twin Peaks is the last course to fill up on a week-to-week, weekend-to-weekend basis. 
I know this because I asked the customers on Saturday morning, where did y'all come from? Oh, we came from Golden. Couldn't find a place anywhere else with one. Get that a lot. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. But in a month when we had so many record high temperatures and it was just a hot, burning hot month, that last course to fill up may not have quite the revenue month that we did the previous year. So that's that's the only way I'm you know kind of explaining that one for sure. Um, this month the weather's been a little bit better and we're up twelve thousand dollars right now over last year in August. So when the weather's good we're busy. And it was interesting in July when it was hot early, I could see it slow down and then it got nice for about ten days and it picked right back up and then it got hot and it slowed right back down. So kind of what we're seeing. Uh, but all in all, it's been a great year. And then, you know, it's these summer months where we keep exceeding, you know, $230,000 plus in revenue. I can remember back in the days when, you know, we'd make 120 and we'd be jumping up and down. So we're still really doing well. And uh, things are going very good. How do, you, how do you project such an increase in the number of rounds and yet so little increase in revenue? Are you, are you comparing last year's rounds and this year's rounds with me? Because so yeah. yeah. last year's rounds, I messed up. We had the staff was not staff was checking in people that had prepaid times, but they weren't bringing in the round as a round. So by the end of the year, it all got bring in and all got caught up. But right now, those bulk months of May, June, July, August, it was about, about this time last year. I figured this out. This, Jeff and I had a nice conversation about how come our rounds are so close to Sunset's round in terms of volume. And so then I started looking back at the T-sheets and rounds weren't getting money in. We were getting all the money, so the money was there, but the rounds weren't getting money in. So that's why you've seen that skew. I will say this year, every round's rung in, when it's supposed to be, on the day it's supposed to be, lead rounds, prepaid rounds, all of it. So next year you'll have a lot better picture of that. Does that make sense? So otherwise, really good. Things are going well. Would you mind covering Ryan's numbers? Sure. So it looks like Sunset had a good month. They were just a little over a thousand plus ahead in revenue, 108, 190, 106, 562, so 1600 over. 16.76 um, up for the year at, at Sunset. And uh, here they are, actual revenue of 492, 340. Uh, I was a pro at Sunset. Bill, Bill remembers this back in the day. Yep. And we, I don't know, we're not 492. I don't think we ever had an entire year of 492. I should say it was like 450 was the top end. Yeah, I mean, it was, we were really pleased with like that. It was like 454. Yeah. So my, my point is back in the day, that's amazing. Here we are with five months still to go, and that's, so Sunset's doing really well. Um, their rounds are coming in 51.66, and they're they're over in the rounds as well. 22,206 rounds for the year, so yeah, they're on track, having a great year. So, any questions for Sunset? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, old business. Okay. Yep. yep. Ryan, Ryan will start, and then Dan has some news that occurred, um, and we'll get just a little bit of information. We'll sure. we start with Dan on his computer. Are you ready to go? Sure. All right. Cool. All right. Well, as everybody knows, I'm surprised he's even talking to us. <laughs> you can't wipe the smile off my face right now. <laughs> Am I in your way, Rick? No. Okay. So, as everybody knows, we've been working on the new maintenance facility, and we got substantial completion last, a week ago, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, so on Wednesday, we got to start moving in, so we took Wednesday through Wednesday, moved, got our mechanic all set up, so he's in there, he's working, moved all the other stuff down, and I felt that we were in a good spot to start from there, so we started from there last Thursday. And uh, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. There's lots of room, 
spread out. The mechanic feels like he can spread out and do his thing, and we're still just, you know, kind of working on getting ourselves set, you know. So I took the pictures just today. Jeff told me about 130. Hey, can you make a quick slideshow? So, so pictures are still a mess, kind of a mess, but uh, it'll show you exactly where we're at. So. Wow. So this is our equipment building. This will house all the equipment. And like I got all the T mowers, greens mowers over on the north side. This middle side, middle area here has um, fairway mowers right along here. The rough mower sits here. And this is all still kind of open to be able to figure out what to do with it. And you'll be able to see inside here in a minute. So here's the uh, maintenance building. Here's break room. Offices sit back here. You can kind of see in there to the mechanics um, work area. That other door to the south there is the indoor wash bay. And then on the end of there, we have an irrigation room and a chemical room. So, um, so here is the inside of the maintenance building, or the equipment building. This is looking to the north. You'll see all the um, triplexes are laid out there. Ferry moors sit here. And like I said, this area is still all nice and open. This is looking to the south. So that whole area there is still, still gonna try to be able to figure out exactly what's gonna go where. This is inside. So we had to design it to, at a, at, with a little slope. So this area sits down lower than the other area. So we're gonna use this as storage for like cards, stuff we don't use very often. And then our whole wall of shovels and rakes and um, tools that the guys use on a daily basis. So this is the south end of the equipment building. So here's inside the mechanics um, work area. This is looking towards the south. You can see here's our grinding room. That's a parts room. He's got an office back here. And this is the new thing that he's been loving the most. That's a golf lift. So you can set basically any type of equipment that you have, get it up off the ground so he's not rolling around in the dirt or concrete or, or all that. So that's that's been huge to get that. He's used that. The, three days every day since we've been in there. And then this is looking towards the north. Here's the electrical room there. And then you'll see here, and then we have all these um, power cords hanging down here for when we start getting electric carts. Like we have two, we have three of them right now. So we'll pull them in here and we can just pull those cords right down and be able to, he doesn't have onboard chargers. So you can just plug right into there and they're all set to go. You don't have to be moving chargers all around and winding up cords. So. So that part's pretty cool. And then here's the break room that we have. As you can see, we uh, still put stuff together, but this is looking out towards the east and um, got a, somewhat of a kitchen there, refrigerator. This will be where our job board sits. We're gonna get a digital job board. Just gotta work, work our way through ETS. So, and then the offices and stuff are on the, the west side of that building there, so. That also serves as the training area. Yep. Training, training videos, safety videos, all that stuff is, is done in there. So there you go. That's a, a quick <laughs> and dirty view of it. But uh, but yeah, super excited, and uh, it's been it's been fun to try to figure out where everything's gonna go and and lay it out the way we want. So, so. congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thanks. What a process. Yeah, thanks to everybody. Quick you know. question, to Jeff from the board: Is it possible to have a like, board meeting now? Oh, <laughs> The other thing I just would add is it, it has been a long time coming. I mean, the, the bond issue passed in November of 2018, and I uh, can't say enough uh, for all the work that Dan did, and even more so than Dan, Sharice Montgomery was our uh, project manager. You know Sharice. For sure. Yeah, and Sharice uh, has been with the city for three or four years now. And she came on right then for us. Yeah. Well, she was right after the place. Yeah. So I just can't imagine what it would have been yeah. like without her being there. So she did uh, all the hard big, stuff. Yeah, big thank you to her. <laughs> uh, we worked with uh, Phipps to do the work, and they were excellent uh, as a contractor to work with. We probably have two months to get all of the punch list items done, and then we'll get our permanent occupancy and be ready to 
to roll. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't I didn't like shows coming to projections. Do we oh, over, over our original, yeah. original, <laughs> or, or recent? There I ask. How about recent? <laughs> um, well, we came within budget okay. and actually had very few change orders um, built into the contract. I think it was ninety-five thousand dollars for change orders, and I think uh, last I had heard we had used all but five hundred dollars oh. of that. Nice. But we had. Um, plan for about a 15% contingency and didn't really have to touch any of that. So that money will just go back uh, to the golf uh, fund balance. Which is really nice. And yes, in, at our next meeting we would like to <laughs> hold it out there. <laughs> we'll go on a tour. Right. Yeah. Bring your walking <laughs> shoes. Yeah. Bring your walking shoes. There's a lot of space yeah, in there. A lot between. of space in between. Yeah. <laughs> Get my steps in now for sure. Alright, ready? Yep. Alright, following along with Dan presenting about his project, I also have a little update how the irrigation project's going here at Twin Peaks. Right now, we've kind of been in a holding pattern. Uh, not much work has been done since we met last. The construction crew left at, uh, probably about first part of May. To head off to their summer projects. We've had a few construction guys around all summer working on a few odds and ends. So just a few uh, refreshers here. This is about as updated map as I have still. So everything from the driving range to the west has been completed on the new uh, irrigation system. Everything on the back nine is still the old system running off the new pump station. Even with the new pump stations, we've noticed quite a improvement on the back nine, showing that how tired the old pumps really were. And so the one thing we've been working on the most this summer is kind of dialing everything in. Here on the right, or my right, your left shows our new greens coverage. So we now have five dedicated sprinkler heads for every green. So right now we have really good coverage on the greens. We're having to actually turn stuff down a whole lot more than what we used to. And then on the other end of all these ones, we have heads coming out for the berms. So now every inch of the berms in the greens area are completely covered. And then this other picture shows kind of what we've been working on through the summer is throughout the new system there's we're still finding a little bit of construction material through the pipes so every once in a while we'll find a group of heads that are plugged and we'll find some pipe shavings inside of it so part of the process when they fuse the pipe is they have to shave uh, the part of the pipe that touches the outside atmosphere and make a clean surface for it to bond together so that got fell into the pipe when they were doing that process. And every once in a while we find a group of heads that are still plugged, so we have to go and take all the valves out, flush them out, put them back together, and then they're looking like the other picture. So just a little bit of dialing everything in. Our biggest thing we've been working on, which happened within the last month that we found out had a few hiccups to it. We have now started running off our central computer which shows the, the show on the left there. Before we just been running local programs off our satellites where we program a set amount of time for each sprinkler head and everything this runs. Right now since we're on central computer we can dial in each head specifically, run it down to what area, what every area needs to give it the right head. So if we know if you're out golfing at Twin Peaks and notice some areas have been a little drier than normal, wetter than normal, we've still been dialing everything in and we've been on our central computer probably well, I think it's probably the first part of August when we first got that hooked up. We found out that the communication wire that runs from that to the field had a few mix in it and causing interference and we had to replace or the construction company had to come back and replace a few sections of wire 
and fi fix a few uh, issues with the electrical power for the boxes also. So now that we have that all done, we've been running off our central computer, which is a huge upgrade for us now. And another part, this last week was installed. If you've know, been out here and noticed this sitting back behind 17 Green, this is our weather station. So this will talk to our central computer. So once everything is hooked up and wired together, and calibrate a little better. We're still working through some bugs. This weather station will talk to our computer and it'll adjust run times for every sprinkler down to what the uh, weather conditions the weather station gives and the computer feels it needs to put out the right amount of water for that, those given conditions. So that's really cool, really big techno technological advancement for our irrigation system. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of improvements you see off of the weather station being up there. Right now, the first, we've had a couple of the construction guys come back and they've been working on putting in the locations for the new satellites out in the back nine. So the construction, full construction crew, when they come back and kind of play connect the dots between the new satellites. Over here on the left shows one of the pedestals they start um, digging the holes for for the sweeps. Here's the pedestals you'll see out on the back nine if you go out there. And then here's a picture of this kind of the same one as before just to show what the new satellites will look like on the back nine. So all, once they put in the main line and the sprinkler system, all the wires will come back to these areas, hook up in the boxes, and then we'll have control to all those new areas on the back line. And then here's just a couple of pictures I took today, if anyone remembers. Uh, so we have on the left here is the west side of two fairway by the concrete ditch, and then here's looking down one to the west from the tee box. If anyone remembers those in the past, by this time of year, this whole right side of one is usually pretty brown because of the lack of coverage. And then the whole west side of number two here was dirt because there was no coverage over there. So this one here on two shows how much seed has came in just in the few months since the construction company left in May. So all the seed they put down is generated. So as time goes, and then once we get into better seeding conditions here in the fall, I'll probably put down some more seed. And we're hoping to have some really nice turf along the west side of number two there. But to me, this shows some of the biggest differences and improvements of the new irrigation system. It shows now that we have full coverage wall to wall, we should have nice green turf everywhere on the golf course now. And then one of the other areas we had seeded was around the lake banks when we had the dredging done. So this area from about water coming back, that was all the new material they reshaped for when the lakes were dredged out. So we have the lake banks seed starting to grow in, so that's going to work real nice for some erosion control so the dirt doesn't slough back down into the lake or on the edges. And I just have a few slides here of what, uh, moving forward in the next couple months, what we're expecting. So throughout the summer, uh, ACC, our construction company, has been in and out between their projects. When they come back, they've been leveling sprinkler heads. If we notice, some have been settling as we go. They've been helping us to adjust the throw on the sprinkler heads to make sure each sprinkler is hitting the area it's designed to hit and then adding any backup nozzles we notice we need. If something needs a little bit more water in an area or if we need something to throw behind a park circle. And then, like I mentioned a little bit ago, uh, we had some new communication wire pulled from 6T to 9T. That leg, this could have been a bad chunk of wire. Something could have got damaged on the install. We don't really know, but 
that was keeping part of the south side of the golf course on the front nine from talking and created interference so the computer couldn't talk to the satellites. Now that's fixed, everything's hooked up and working like it's supposed to. And then also they'll be working on setting the new satellite pedestals on the back nine. So as of right now, we had our well, we had our construction meeting last not last week, but the week before, kind of touching base with the construction company. Right now, they are anticipating to start mobilizing from their current projects they're working on, start coming back around Halloween, end of October, and looking to get things started to start on the back nine. And as of right now, we're still. So, um, on target to be our projected completion date of December of this year. So, anyone have any questions? Of yes? Of course I do. How many satellites do you have out there? Currently we have, well the old system had 28. Okay. Uh, with the new system and the new design, because we pretty much doubled our sprinkler heads, but the each satellite can control 64 stations. So as we sit, we'll have 32. 32, and I assume they're not cheap. <laughs> I, 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 I'm curious, is there any sort of, and I might be being overcautious here, but is there any sort of notion about protecting these satellite boxes from equipment, tractors, errant uh, golf carts, et cetera? It's, we put them in places where they're a little less obvious. So we'll try to protect them in areas out of play, out of driving, areas around tee boxes, around greens. A lot of them are tucked by trees, so that way they're bigger things. But as much as we try to protect them, it's still part of it. Okay, but you're comfortable with it then? Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. It, yeah, we've, in some shape and form, there's been satellite boxes out here for, well, since the course is been uh, built and I can think of a handful of times a satellite gets knocked over but these ones being plastic have a little bit more give to them okay and, uh, okay it's a, it's part of it just curious okay any other question yes um, um, I've gotten very involved in the water water bot etc and um, it's becoming more and more of an issue for the city and how we use the water, how residents are using water, how HOA is using water, et cetera, and involved in a lot of stuff. What protection do you have that you aren't using, quote, too much water? What, 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 I don't know if you've got any, any uh, even if you have how much water you used last year, the year before, the year before that, one of the, one of the problems you run into in trying to measure year to year, of course, is that last year was the most rainy year in the last 40, 50 years. You know, so you typically you wouldn't have used so much water as you're going to use this year. And then, you know, in 2022, it was, we almost used about, quote, the average rainfall for, for Longmont. So there's a lot of there's a lot of analysis going on about water usage versus you know rainfall, and and one of the questions we keep getting is how do you know everybody everybody wants green grass, so um, what they're one of the things they're recommending and they're in the Longmont City is giving grants for is for you to remove the grass. So that you don't use the water, and and so you know at some point in time I got we got three golf courses that are, must be using a lot of water. I, I would agree with that. I, and so the question becomes how do we defend ourselves in that we are taking we're all the precautions and we're doing everything appropriately, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> So with the design of this course, it was estimated that we should save between 30 and 37 percent. And, and so that, that's a significant uh, savings. And, and then also there's the, the power savings as well. 
I, I think one of the challenges, it's going to take a while for us to get everything dialed in to be able to know for sure how much water we really are saving. You know, Ryan talked uh, a little bit about trying to get the system onto the, the central controller and he really underplayed the amount of work that he had to, to do to, to make that happen. And, and like he said, we're, we're still out there identifying hot spots or overly wet spots. I think one of the things that Keith would, would really point out is, is the potential of being around the green going to be so much better than it used to be where we had to overwater at the top and then it was always soggy at the bottom and with the, the new system it really should reduce the amount of uh, water that we're using. So I, I feel pretty comfortable with that. I think the next step would be is identifying do we need to have wall-to-wall -wall, um, green grass or, you know, or blue, blue grass or can it start being uh, a little bit more like uh, out at U Creek with some of the taller grasses the, the challenge you run into there is pace of play because the, the grass gets too tall and, and people are, are taking too much time to find the ball. The other, uh, St. Green uh, School District is putting a product wherever they have grass. It's a relatively new product. But what it does, especially for our areas where we have um, clay, you know, ground is that it, it makes the grass roots go deeper so they can use less water to keep it green. I don't know if that's anything you ever want to consider on the golf course or not. There's, there's several there's several products out there, some are pretty damn expensive, but there are some, it sounds sort of crazy, but uh, there's a product coming out of California the farmers are using to do exactly that. And, and that's pretty relatively inexpensive. So I don't know if, you know, we have people, in fact, people come out, uh, I can't remember names, more than one water, blah, blah, blah. And to measure um, our grassroots, and that turns out in RHOA, the grassroots were like three quarters of an inch. We put this product on, and two years later, the grass moves from one and three quarters to two inches. That's a huge difference in, you know, we've got the, what do you call it, blue grass. And so, we use a lot less water, and the grass stays green. And even if it gets, you know, uh, brownish, it doesn't, it's not dying. So, and I don't know if that's anything we really have to consider or not, or whatever. In the, in the long, long, long term of things. But uh, I'm just, just concerned because of what's going on in the city of Long Island, what they're trying to do, and, and water in general. I just think that's at some point in time we're going to be with that. I just, and I think, you know, spending the, spending the dollars, like having a living station, et cetera, is in, anybody that's concerned about water. Just going to say that's money well spent. You know, they're going to spend that. That's really neat, you know. So if you get rain, you shut off the, shut off the, the uh, system, etc. That, that, that is really, really, really important. And there's, there's, you know, there's other things you can get that are pretty expensive, but it, it, can, it can measure the, the humidity and, and, and decide whether you more water, or less water, et cetera. Of course, it's expensive stuff. But, but I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know what kind of questions you know, about this year or two years down the road or three years down the road we're going to get. At least I want to be prepared to be able to answer these questions and know that we're, we're doing economically, ecologically, the right thing. I guess I'll get off my head. To that end, just if just point exactly and Ryan as well. This new system is so much more efficient than the old system. It is unbelievable. And the green surfaces this year have been so good. Um, and yet down at the bottom of the mounds, it's not it's not swamp. So 
Yes, in some places and in some instances, yes, but very rarely. So this is the best I've seen the greens in the 19 years I've been here. You know, is it, would it be um, a good thing to do sometime when we get this system in to say that, you know, there's a new irrigation system and it's going to save water? I think we will ultimately do that. You know, because I just think it's really, really important. Yeah, get that message out. Oh, so I went through this process and did the irrigation audit with the old system and showing exactly what we had and what we will have. Right. To have some numbers. I didn't think the audits are not. We've we done audits, you know, I to a lot. That involves in, in the city. That's a perfect opportunity for what we talked about a few meetings ago. An article for the uh, little newsletter that goes out to the utility bills to let the residents know that positive things are being done. Yeah. Right now, just from dialing everything in, it's hard to tell water since we've been using a lot more than we would in a normal year, just for the fact we've been flushing out the debris. Construction companies been dialing stuff in, we've been dialing things in, but just based off the of amount of runtime to keep an area green, on the greens before we have uh, 10 15 minutes on the green head, right now we're down to five. So it's just that's right now I can only base it off the time since that's the one consistent factor I've been working with right now, but once everything gets set and a little more consistent, we'll have a better idea. We have flow meters everywhere that shows how much we're using. And one of the things that we had to do with the empty audits, our system was put in 1986 out in the wilderness. And now there's all these holes around us, so the pressure from one side to the other is different, etc. And what we ended up doing is putting in pressure sensitive tents. So if you wanted an inch of, an inch of water, in, in you know 15 minutes, you got you got you got an inch of water, you know over there and over there and over there because of because the heads were pressure sensitive. And I don't even know if that's something. Well, so concerned about. But most HOA and stuff is block system, so one valve runs numerous well, heads at one time. Yeah, we have valve and heads, so each head can be cons uh, controlled individually. So it's kind of like what Jeff said a little bit ago, finding those areas that we really need to be green wall to wall. If we decide we want we need to save water, we can turn down all the heads on the perimeter and still leave the interior. Yeah. So we have the well, we had, and now we have an even better capability of controlling stuff area to area. So each head that throws the 75 foot spacing, we have control down to the second on pretty much every inch of the golf course. I just want us to be able to defend ourselves. <laughs> if we are in a better position to defend ourselves now than we have been in 35 years. So I think that's it, though. You know, that's really. I think the, the challenge we're facing is going we're gonna face is at sunset. And because it's it's potable water, that's a whole different impact than the two other golf courses that all use you know, ditch water. Mm -hmm. So I think that will be one of the first things we'll be challenged with as we All right, that's our update for the bond projects. All right, uh, moving on to new business. So the, the next two items came out of our January meeting, and, and I think you, you might have been the one that suggested these two items. Um, barriers for new golfers, and Rick identified one earlier. And... Uh, and then activities for non-golfers. So, and did you have anything you wanted to talk about specifically? Not, uh, not specifically, no. Okay. All right. So based on your experience as golfers, what do you think are challenges to people 
either beginning the game, coming out as often as, as maybe we had like. Do you have any thoughts? Rick? I do. Uh, <laughs> sum it up in one word, intimidation. I remember my first time going out on tee box and having the guy in front of me hit 270 yards yeah. and I could only pop it 200. It was like, holy cow, I can't play this game. Right. And I, I, got, I wasn't ready to give up, but now I can reach him, so I'm okay. So, <laughs> you uh, teach me how yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, And then the other thing I think would be frustration. Um, there's a lot of golfers, beginners in particular, that come out and they're just not ready to be on the course. I hate to say it that way, but my wife wisely said, take me to the range, take me to the range, take me to the range. She probably probably went there a half a dozen times before she stepped on the court, course, just in order not to be so incredibly frustrated about playing. Because, you, you know, they're going to have a high score and they're going to get frustrated. And the more they feel comfortable swinging in a golf club, the less frustrated they're going to be. I think part of the barriers too is knowing, I want to say, the etiquette of the golf course, which you don't get from the range. I mean, and so if you're if you show up and you're a twosome paired with another twosome, and that twosome has a pretty strong opinions, they can make it difficult for somebody who, you know, might not know their way. <clears throat> around, you know, someone else's ball on the green, or they, all the things that everyone here probably takes for granted. <clears throat> on, on that, Keith and Sam, do we do any education for people about etiquette or anything? Don't we have something on the golf It's spilled out on our, on our car that we had now. But typically when somebody's new to the game, they're playing golf, with somebody they know that knows the game. And there's things that you can do to make it more enjoyable. For example, I took my five-year-old grandson out twice this year. We'll both tee off, pick his ball up, go to my drive, get a couple more shots, pick his up, and just keep it moving. And it's enjoyable. Adults need to be to do the same thing. Get your tee shot. Pick it up, go to the furthest drive, playing from there. You know, there's things that you can do to uh, not feel intimidated. You got a guy there that's hitting every, every shot 40 yards, just duffing it. That's extraordinarily frustrating. That's why you just pick it up and just, you know, learn to develop a pace. And that's one of the best tips that I think to take a new, a new golfer out. We, yeah, we, I would say yes, there, there's so many ways you can do it. What you yeah. said, what was really smart there is that most people that play golf are playing golf with someone that knows how to play golf. So that's really helpful to them. Uh, it, it goes all the way down to our basic junior golf stuff. When we do junior golf on Tuesday mornings, we have an hour and a half of fun time slash lesson time. And then it's 11.30, I pair all the kids up. They meet me and I pair them into foursomes. A lot of the times these kids don't even know each other. And I'll put them in groups and say, you're group one. And I make them handle their money. So speaking to the intimidation factor, I make them handle their cash money. They walk upstairs, they walk to the front counter. The guy standing at the front counter says, what group are you? We're group two. Check, check, check. They all pay their money. They come in, they pay their money for lunch. They go out to the golf course. We got people on the tee boxes, and we don't have we have people out there monitoring them to keep them safe, but we want them to be independent. So they're out there playing, and based on their ability, I tell them where they should play. So we have, let's say we have younger kids who don't hit it very far. We go all the way up, I don't know if you've all noticed, but we have orange tee markers at Twin Peaks. Those are beginner tee markers. Oh, yeah. So we got little children who can't get the ball very far. We send them all the way up there, and on every hole, this kind of furthers your point, Sam. On every hole, each child gets six shots. Their ball is not on the green in six shots. They pick it up, they carry it to the green. Once they get on the green, they get four putts. If it's not in the hole in four putts, they pick it up and they go to the <coughs> next hole. So six shots, four putts, do not get in front of each other so that way nobody gets hit with a ball. Um, and, and I'm constantly using that even for the folks that I give lessons to all the beginner folks that I teach. 
one of the first things they learn early on, because they are intimidated when they come. I point over there to that the orange tee markers on number 18, and I say, all you got to do is hit it 30, 40 yards six times, and you're on the green, and you can play golf. And I'm telling them this in their second lesson. And I tell them that their only job is to keep up with the group in front of them. Don't be worried about the group behind you. You keep up with the group in front of you, and you'll be just fine. No one can say anything. Now, if you're out there taking seven practice wins and then missing it, followed by seven more practice wins, that's a problem. Okay? You walk up and you hit it. And you go find it and you hit it again. And the better you get, the easier it is. But giving people that independence on the golf course, I think, is massive. You know, that's an interesting point you make because we have a vernacular, and I don't know if it's as prevalent as it was when I was growing up, but men's tees and ladies' tees. Yeah, it's yeah. not like that anymore. Yeah. And, and, well, actually, I hear it occasionally, but yeah. I try to tell people it's not men's, ladies, pros, it's handicap. Yeah. And, and if you have a handy, high handicap, move up. Yes. So, I mean, that's another point I think I hear occasionally. That don't, don't, go ahead, move up, it's okay, it's okay. I that, even, that stigma is getting so much better. Yeah, I think yeah. it is, I think it is. Because us growing up, it was always the ladies team. Yep. Was the forward team. Yep, yep. I can't tell you how many of the older guys, you know, can't hit the ball as far as they used to. They have no problem going up to the forward team. I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see really, that yeah. It's really improved. And our, our men's club actually has tournaments now where Whatever you can play, whatever tee box you want. <clears throat> so we got guys playing red tees, we got guys playing white tees and blue tees, and that's all in the same event. Because the course is handicapped and rated from each individual tee box. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna insist they do it even all the way up to the golds. Now, obviously, the guy that's a 16 handicap from the whites is going to be maybe a 12 handicap from the golds. Right. Does that make sense? He's yeah. going to get less yeah. shots. Yeah. Be a little, but but he's going to have an easier time because it can't be. You know, all that much fun for that guy from the white tees to hit driver three wood on every hole. So being able to move up and give give people opportunities to hit seven irons and eight irons and nine irons in the green. Um, big, big difference. And so there's a lot more of that now than there used to be. You think there is. And but you're still gonna get a lot of folks that are out there that, you know, I mean and I saw a, a, two couples that let us off on Sunday morning, they teed off at six fifty. I come watching them, they're rolling in at, at a good solid four hours and you know, 33 minutes coming up 18. They're playing a scramble format. Yeah, yeah. And that's, they're that's playing scramble, but they're playing slow. Well. <laughs> so I'm over that. And what, but what are you going to do? You know, if the marshal goes over there and hollers at these folks, they were having a ball. You should have heard. And the people behind them seemed to be patient enough. They were a threesome. But I was just so thankful because there we are in the morning. One of the biggest things, Sam, and I'm sure you will agree with this, one of the biggest differences I've seen in the last 20 years in golf, that foursome was two men and two women. The sheer volume of, of the ladies that are coming out to the golf course and that comfort level for many, many ladies, so great on the weekends. It's really, I mean, yes, during the week we still have all of our core groups that play, but on the weekends, I'm out here on Sundays and say, I don't, I don't know 15 people. I really don't. The regulars are gone. And we have all these people coming in from out of town. That, and and it's, it's couples and it's husbands and wives. And, and, and many times you see two and three. And I saw foursomes of ladies playing on the weekends. We're getting so many more women. It's it's just, it's it is great. so awesome to see. Because that's the growth of the game. And the, you know, the vast majority of people, I would say probably beginners that I teach is easily 75% beginner women. Hmm. So, it's really exciting. And I, I still believe that there are going to be times when things slow down a little bit, but I do believe the game is still in a COVID burst and we're still growing. And I still think we're bringing a lot of new people to the game. But there's always going to be barriers. It's just tough. It's tough. And you, in your example, of getting paired with two other people that are, that are good golfers that know the difference, that's that's tough because you can't really break it up into two twosomes. And people get paired up and everyone's getting paired up. Now what it does encourage people to do is find two others and play a foursome. I'll tell you what, that happens once or twice and the next time they bring four people. <coughs> but it's, uh, yeah, the growth has been unbelievable. Any other barriers that you feel like we should talk about? I think one of the, one of the barriers that I perceive, and that 
is that we have a nine hole golf course called Sunset here in town. And it's the most difficult course. And people think because it's a nine hole, that's an easy course to go play. But it isn't. It's narrow, it's out of bounds. I think it's the hardest nine holes in three courses. By far. By far, it is. And I know that there's probably not a, a way to say, you know, come develop a, like a haystack was on my whole course. You know, that was an easy course. But that's probably where I think in the long run where we have our biggest opportunity at some point down the road. Finding land would be another issue. But making a, even a, a shorter par three course, something that we, if we have somewhere, that we could make it so that people could develop their game in that setting versus trying to go to the one or three course that we have. <clears throat> because I think that would take away a lot of the intimidation, a lot of the scariness, um, because you've got an opportunity there where all the holes are only 150 yards max or whatever. And it brings a different part to the game and that kind of goes into the helping develop that for the next generation to start with. Your, your youth uh, kids go and play there instead. They don't have to worry about, you know, even if some are drivers or some are seven irons, they can be on the tee box and still do the same club. It, it wouldn't matter. Well, that's kind of what we've established here with our with our orange tee markers. With, it, with the additional tee markers, we've made, yes. it, we've made it a beginner right. par three. We have an 18 hole par three here, really. So, and which, that's, that's where I'm at. which is, I think that we can continue to do a, a, a better and better job of advertising that, letting people know, hey, if you're a beginner, just play the orange tees. And you know, we, we let people. I let people know all the time when I'm working with them. But is that always said at the front counter? Maybe, maybe it could be said more. And you're not wrong about sunset because you have a lot of beginners out there, and all that does, all that does, is slow the place down. Exactly. Because all they're doing is, you know, running across the street and playing balls from the neighbor's yard. Right. Or, or trying to find your ball or whatever. Yeah. No. Never. Yeah. You see that happen. No. <laughs> no. Or, they're, or they're taking two or three sleeves of golf balls because they keep losing them in the yards over fences and whatever yeah. else. But, I, I have a question for Keith and Sam. We talked about the rounds played. Is that 18 holes or is that nine holes? Rounds or rounds? Just that. Well, but, no, but my point here is, is that a lot of people may think it's an 18-hole golf course. I got to go out and play 18 holes. I don't have time to play 18 holes. So, so if I knew or if I understood, I could come out and play nine holes. I'm just saying that could be a bear. Yeah. So, I'm just curious. Well, we 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 what we would prefer to encourage everyone to play 18 holes because mm -hmm. that's going to maximize for us, particularly on the weekends and the mornings. Right. But I think most people know that they can just come out and play nine. And we, we do have a lot, especially in the afternoons, we have a lot of nine. I wonder if New York golfers know that. Because I, I come over, well, I do both courses, and yeah. I don't have time. I'll go play nine. So, so you know, I'd rather play 18, but I'll play nine. We see, we get a lot of play off the back nine on the weekends. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. I believe when maintenance is not, you know, when they're not here doing any work at all on the back nine, well, first hour and a half of the day, we'll send out a lot of golfers off the back nine. Good. Good. Okay. In fact, I encourage a lot of folks. That's, that's when I do my playing lessons. Is off the back nine on Saturday or Sunday morning, because then, then I can get on. Okay. Anything else? Marshall, Paul? Is, is there any new etiquette out there? Because music is now a thing, and you know, 10 years great. ago that would have, love it. would have never been a thing. It's great. Music. <laughs> yeah, they'll have a, a speaker that you put on their cart and their phone's playing music while they're playing golf. Oh. Adam Cox. Just, just, more, just more of a lighter atmosphere. You know, it, it's, it's just a new culture to come. I, I do as well, man. I love playing music at the point. You keep you get yeah. you crank it? Absolutely. Oh, it's awesome. It's it's really Golf has gone from what could be construed as an old country club stuffy sport to it's you you get everybody out here now. It's really cool. <coughs> and that's uh, what golf you get. Golf and everyone for the most part, I mean it's it's really interesting. Oh, it makes it so much more fun. When I'm out here on the weekends, it's just really exactly. interesting to watch the people. 
Because people are, some are obnoxious, some are loud, some are quiet, some are just having fun. But everyone seems to mesh and get along pretty good. And it's, it, and they're all, you've got people coming from everywhere. Just all sorts of different backgrounds and everything. It's just really, never in my mind, but I was, you know, thought I would see. And now that the college kids are back, they're all back now too. Because they don't have, they don't have pay staff to go to it. Just the other reason we were down in July a little bit. There's no college kids around in July. So we have them in June for whatever reason. I think July is a very dead month, especially for summer school. Um, and we, they all come back in, in August and we, every weekend. Anything else on barriers? Activities for non golfers Open the bar. Open the bar. <laughs> well, the bar is better. You know. That was the concert. This you had the concert this year. It was great. Maybe. I mean, it was it, it it was so much more than I thought it was going to be. And, and we, I, I, oh. No, like for our, for our snack bar, it's usually like a one person operation. So we had we had so we brought in two to be safe, and uh, unfortunately we had somebody else that was the our manager happened to be around, and she had to hop in. It was slammed because you know when people go to these uh, outdoor concerts, there's always food trucks and stuff, and they go with the mindset they're going to have a bite to eat, and that just didn't. I don't know. We we missed that one, but uh, but we it worked. We made it happen. It was great. It was very good. I told Jeff, do it once a week. And we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was great. Uh, I just think in a, I'm happy to hear that. I'm seeing it uh, at a close friend that she is the one that's like, she's making the tea times for her and her significant other. And there's four of them that go out. <clears> and, like, the girls are driving it. And I remember when it was the opposite of that. That's right. Yeah, the girls were always waiting for the finish. Yep. Um, so that's exciting. But it's also like if you start getting pushback, like there's going to be people who don't don't use the golf course, don't believe in the golf course, and so the use of water is going to be a waste. Whereas if you can get those people to embrace the the space as well, you know. Like fishing or something? Well, not, <laughs> no, but like, thanks. Hey, I used to catch, uh, wow. I used to look for frogs as a kid. But, yes, you know, having, just having them come out, being around the sport, being around the environment. Why not? <laughs> there, there's a story behind that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my thought, is that, you know, Back when there, you know, the females that were intimidated to come to the golf course, if you gave them a reason to come where they didn't have to just play golf, yeah. and then they could, you know, like, oh, this is a great, you know, I want to come back. I want to, that wasn't the, the idea behind the activities. We get a lot of, um, we get a lot of couples where, hey, my wife doesn't play or my husband doesn't play, and they'll just ride along. And enjoy the day. Mm -hmm. so hop on the cart, yeah. get an extra cart, whatever. You know, <coughs> have some cocktails and, and enjoy the day without playing golf. We get a lot of folks that just come up, literally just come up, no golf. They don't hit balls. They just come up, sit out in the patios, and have drinks. And we get that as well, especially in the evening. Get a lot of that. Read, watch the sunset, yeah. have some views. cocktails, yeah. get some views. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you're right. Both of you guys. So yeah, we're very fortunate. We get a lot of that. we get a lot of that. And we'll continue to do, you know, a concert a summer, at, and I think we're back here next year. Um, you know, we just don't have the, so recreation is actually the staff that organizes those events and really don't have the capacity. If it could be something where if we want to expand those opportunities that we could, uh, work with some of the recreation staff, the temp staff, to do some uh, additional hours where they could plan some of those events if we wanted to do more. But golf would have to 
pay the bill. Recreation is paying for it right now. Because for that very reason, we really want to uh, have golf courses be for everybody. Whether it's a concert, walking your dog out here in the morning or in the evening, uh, we, we really want people to be able to do that. I would like to see us uh, at some point uh, start expanding into some special events inside the buildings, whether it's uh, tied to, you know, national championships or the World Series or the playoffs, that sort of thing, to, to tie into that. But again, that, that some of those things are, are staff intensive to, to be able to do it and it does take some time. One of the things we tried to do a couple of years ago was kind of Friday afternoon specials. I, I don't know that we're, are we doing that anymore? Um, it kind of, can, we, we don't advertise, like we, we put out flyers throughout the year. We haven't done that in a couple of years. Right. Um, but it kind of progressed from there. I mean, it can, it's right. kind of continued on. Right. Um, it's not huge, but like Keith was saying, we get a few people that come out, not just on Fridays, but just throughout the week. One of, one of the things, in, in my opinion, about U Creek and Twin Peaks is really in the, in the areas of town that they are, the two golf courses, there's no other competition or opportunity for going to have cocktails or you know, sit out on, on the deck and, and maybe we need to play that up a little bit more too because it is some of the best views in, in town are, you know, and if at sunset you look down number one at the mountains, it doesn't get any better than that. Sure. No, I, I agree. I mean, that's what I've heard, you know, from my friends around. Me. They do play a lot of golf. So, you know, he plays, I think, I don't know what kind of things, it doesn't matter. But, you know, uses the golf course for the golf course, but as he even said, be great if we could come down and get a burger and a beer at Twin Peaks and we don't because we don't know if it's if that's available or not. Like Well, it depends on what time you want to come. Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I mean I, I sat at home at six tonight because we weren't really doing anything in there. But the reality of it is if if I mean during the summer months somebody's in here all the time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. so if, if yeah. Reach out, ask me, I'll let you know. And, and maybe what and everything we have, everything we have, you know, burritos, hot dogs, brats, Italian sausage, most of it can be heated up very quickly. Okay. And, and, or maybe what we do is start a night, like Wednesday night is, or Tuesday night is taco night, and try to drive people to come um, so that so the, the meal is fairly inexpensive and try to really get the people to, to buy the drinks and, and that sort of thing. Um, just as an example, maybe you and I can talk some more about that. Yeah. Any other thoughts or comments? Okay. Thank you. Items from staff, ready to go to there. So yes. our next meeting is scheduled for October. And uh, we can meet in September if you all want to do that. So just a quick vote. Do you want to meet in September or stay with the calendar? Make a motion to stay with the calendar. I second staying with the calendar as written. So you want to take a vote? All in favor of keeping the calendar, the current calendar for meetings? Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So our next meeting would be in October, and we would meet out at the uh, new maintenance building if everybody wants to go out there. Cool. We have the date of that one, October? I think it was the 20th. 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 For October? Yeah. Okay. It's the 28th. 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 Yep. I have to make sure I get it correctly. <laughs> That's all I have. So, when you, I did from the staff, is that where we're at? Yeah. I, I would just real quickly like to just say, all these years at this golf course, 47 years, never had a new irrigation system, didn't really know what to expect this year. 
And the fact we've had as good a year as we've had, I think it's unbelievable. Um, a lot of that goes to Ryan, just keeping us, keeping this golf course functional enough to play and going out of his way and doing this at both golf courses. Can't say enough. I, I didn't know what to expect. I really, there was a part of me that thought it would be a lost year and it ended up being a very good year. And, and that's really hard to do while you're doing an install. And, and it was very intrusive early on. But even the construction crew, they, they, are, they have a really good attitude about people trying to stay out of people's way and let people play golf and let the golf be the golf. So i uh, super thankful because it was, I just want to make sure he gets some credit for that. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Well, and him, and his, him and his whole staff, it's just been. It's been an adventure. Yeah, it has. <laughs> every, every morning we're not sure what to expect, but, but we managed to keep our heads above water and, uh, and get, through, <laughs> get through the whole thing this summer. So I just, uh, I thank Ryan, I thank Jeff for supporting Ryan through it all because it's been, it's been tough to have the Ute Creek project going on, this, these two projects. It's hard enough to run golf courses, but when you add all that, and that's a lot. So that's all I have. When, when you're in the car, where's the access to the new maintenance facility? Highway 66. Yeah, there's a right off 66? Yep, the first we'll ride in there. Um, we ask everybody, ride in only. Don't try to cross the highway to come in. And then also when you leave, right, right out because cars are going really fast out there. Yeah, and bad, right? you want to be very careful. There's a parking lot right in front of the building and plenty of space if if there isn't room go ahead and park up in the asphalt and that won't be a problem either okay. yeah just to the uh, east of the third green there yeah i didn't realize there was access right yeah. 66. yep right is it marked no it isn't but look for the silo and just slow down when you're getting close to it's 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 going towards uh, it looks good. It's really good. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. It's the first right right after pace. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right and after look pace. for the silo because that, that's your marker of where the building is. You can see it from quite a ways uh, down the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. <clears throat> that's everything from staff. All right. So next, any items from the board? Nope. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, meeting adjourned.